evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, the largest single-screen drive-in in the United States. We're certainly glad you could be with us this evening. And don't forget the concession stand is open with all kinds of great things to eat and drink. Eighty-nine point three Mahoning Drive-In Radio. Your old friend Virgil back once again for another exciting episode of the podcast. As you guys know, the only podcast dedicated to the love and revival of our beloved drive-in culture. And we got a doozy for you guys today. A legend is in the house. Before we get to him, I want to introduce our co-host today. As always, General Manager Extraordinaire Mark in the house. Say hello, Mark. Hello to the house. Production team, I call them the two-headed monster because they come as a package. JT and Lisa, say hello, guys. Hello. Hi. Super excited (laughs) to have you. And uh, for those of you guys that don't know, which is crazy if you don't because we've been shouting it from the rafters. Um, on July 15th through 17th, we are co-presenting our third Tromathon here at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater. It's a three-day celebration of the greatest and longest-running independent film studio in America with two nights of triple features, all Troma classics. On Friday night, Tromeo and Juliet, Sergeant Kabuki Man, Troma's War. On Saturday night, a triple bill of Toxic Avenger films back-to-back-to-back, to back to back, one through three. And on Sunday night, we're so excited that Troma Dance 22 gets its own day on Sunday. So to hype all of this up, we have the king of Troma in the house, Lloyd Kaufman. Let's welcome him, guys. Hey. Hi, Lisa. I don't have Lisa's uh, tag. So uh, JT, send it to me. Or if I have it, I... Sure. Sure. Thank you. I, I believe Lisa has 500,000 followers, so I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> He's really the heart of our, uh, our whole push. <laughs> I just sent a note to the people who make the Toxic Crusader action figures that they should make an Yvonne figure. Oh, my goodness. Come Ooh. on, now they still have something to sign. Okay. Lisa, Claire, uh, uh, or uh, what was the other name? Sarah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for making the time for us. Uh, Like we talked about, super focused on drive-ins, but since we have you, we're going to kind of uh, pick your brain as well. Sure. For us, we are, you know, of a certain age, we're products of the video store and the cable era. So for us, a lot of the discovery of trauma came from the cult classic section uh, in the video store or came from the USA Up All Night, which was a real exposure piece for Troma. So where do you fall as far as the exposure for Troma and when you kind of turn the corner as far as people knowing the brand? Well, we've, our strategy from uh, 50 years ago was to create a brand. Uh, and I still don't think uh, too many people know about it. <laughs> you know, we yeah. advertising money. But, ev- it, but clearly we grow because I can see the uh, followers... Uh, Troma now, the uh, the video uh, the streaming service uh, is uh, uh, growing uh, slowly. So I, I think we've always been a brand. It's just uh, now it's micro. It used to be minus micro. Now it may be micro plus in size. So, uh, you know, I don't think any other uh, independent studio has lasted for 50 years anywhere in the world, maybe on another planet. But <laughs> thank heavens for the... Uh, a honing drive-in because in the early days, in the 70s, squeeze play, waitress stuck on you, first turn on, blood sucking freaks, cry uncle, you know, all these movies uh, that we uh, made and or distributed, they were all in the drive-ins. And a lot of them, there were many, many drive-ins. I remember there was a drive-in in Detroit that would do $30,000 on the weekend, minimum. Wow. And even even during the winter, it did uh, a good numbers, comparable. Uh, you know, it was a real big deal in the... Uh, 67 well i guess before that like i was saying earlier for me the introduction to trauma films was was usa up all night i would turn on to watch gilbert or Rhonda every friday and saturday and there'd be that trauma logo so uh that's that's why we kind of asked that question was i think for part of a generation that was their first exposure to your films was that late night cable aspect to it well uh, i think vhs vestron sold about two million uh, vhs's at two hundred dollars a pop uh, we didn't get a lot of it, but uh, uh, Toxie was, the, uh, uh, as far as I could discern, because one of our, uh, they poached our head of distribution, and he told me that uh, Toxic Avenger was a seminal movie because it proved that uh, it, 
uh, horror and exploitation would work on a VHS tape. Uh, uh, prior to that, it was considered uh, Michael Jackson, uh, the zombie thing he did, uh, whatever. It Thriller. Was, zombie, yeah. uh, you know, that kind of Jane Fonda self-improvement. Uh, you know, they, there was no uh, real, there was no belief that anything else would really work other than the AAA big, 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 big movies, which right. Restaurant did, uh, you know, the Restaurant and Media Home Entertainment got in first. And um, uh, when they couldn't get the real movies, they uh, filled up on Troma and uh, Roger Corman and stuff like that. Right. Not that we're not real movies, but uh, we're not exactly uh, a boring uh, Doctor Strange. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, what you've got, <laughs> I watched it last night, so I can't, can't not agree. <laughs> but the thing that we love about you and the company is how you really kind of were the punk rock distributors and the punk rock filmmakers of the era the stuff that you guys had on the shelves really stood out from everything else and i think really informed a lot of our interests and love in not just the vhs era but horror movies and exploitation films and people like you said they might not know troma's films off the off the top of their head but you've done an incredible job of being out there in the front and and kind of shouting trauma from the mountains. And we've taken that here at the Mahoning Drive-In Theater to heart in that probably one of the most important things that we do is representing the Mahoning as a staple, a beacon of the industry. And you've been doing that for so many years. Was that a conscious choice to be the face and jump out there and say, hey, I'm going to be the guy with the horn up front, letting people know about trauma. Well, when I was at Yale, I, I um, discovered um, uh, uh, drugs and comic books. Uh, I, I know I graduated, but I don't remember what else. <laughs> uh, but I, I uh, fell in love. I had never seen uh, Marvel comics. I never saw any comic books. My folks didn't permit it. Oliver Stone, with whom I grew up with, had Scrooge McDuck and classic comics, so that was it. And I didn't read much of that. So yeah. when I saw the beautiful uh, you know, Stan, the Marvel and the, and the uh, universe of Marvel and the, the uh, alliteration that Stan Lee uses, uh, yes. uh, talks about uh, Steve Ditko and, you know, he credits the uh, colorers and the painters and all that, which is way ahead of the time because that was never done until uh, him, he. And yeah. um, I don't think it was done. Now with video games and uh, all this kind of, uh, high tech stuff, uh, colorers and coders, and uh, they're all, uh, you know, they're very, very important. So uh, yeah. Stan Lee, I was friendly with him for 50 years. And the movie you played last year, Hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, based on The Tempest, was uh, dedicated, among others, to Stan Lee and, uh, uh, well, John G. Avelson and my stepmother, Sigron, and uh, Sam's big uh, influence. Uh, my problem is, is that I don't particularly care for the, uh, a lot of the mainstream stuff. and. Uh, I want to have total control over what I do as much as the budget will permit and as much as the generous fans, basically, who make our movies, who work yeah. on the sets and are my assistant director. Most of them have been on a movie set. And um, uh, so so uh, uh, I've been very fortunate to stay in the trenches. And Stan Lee, basically, uh, you know, I, I, he, he led me into uh, these things like Comic-Con and and he got me on panels. He, he got Toxie into a Marvel comic. Uh, and then it did well enough, so uh, Toxic Crusaders became a comic book. And then uh, Mr. Revlon uh, ran Marvel into the ground and it went bankrupt. Actually, Re Revlon is bankrupt now. Yay! So, uh, what a great man. He's a, he's a billionaire, but that's what he does. He's terrific. I don't want to say his name. Really, I can really see that crossover. You know, just like Stan, you know, became the face of Marvel, the voice of Marvel. Um, and the guy that was always out there presenting the product, I can really see that crossover. And you made yourself so accessible to filmmakers, young filmmakers, and really were an inspiration, not just from your book, but from the way that you ran your company. And I think that, that really crosses over with every fan that comes to meet you, especially here at the Mahoney. What is it like being that uh, inspiration for the youth? It's a great honor. You know, you can buy an Oscar. You can buy one. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are hundreds of millions of people who are very inspired by Dr. Who or Mr. Who, whatever it is, or Spider-Man <laughs> 52, but um, they don't make movies. Uh, whereas when we finish hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm, 
about a dozen of the crew went off and started a company called Shithouse Productions, and I gave them some money, and they're making an anti-hunting movie called uh, First of the Weird Deer. Yes, I've heard about this. It's going to be great. Do you know Tom Lehrer, by any chance, the, uh, the satirist, satirical songwriter of the 60s? Poisoning Pigeons in the Park. Yeah. Oh, yes. 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 The old dope peddler, songs like that. Uh, Anybody has an anti-hunting song from 1960 something that uh, we're going to put as the title sequence uh, music or the end titles. And oh, uh, it's a great movie. It's funny as hell. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, clearly an offspring of trauma. And yeah. uh, um, you're showing a movie next week in Trauma Dance by uh, one of my protégés, uh, Mercedes the Muse. Uh, it's a movie about feminism from her point of view. Uh, it's terrific. It's to, to feminism today, what it should be. That's what I love about about your movies and trauma in general is that there's so much to say. Like there's so much satire, political, social satire, or environmentalist point of points of view, and it's not just all entertainment. You're also getting something like educational or something that you should like learn from it. Indeed, uh, Samuel Fuller, who if you haven't seen his movies, he's dead. Oh, yeah. But he was a buddy. Shock Corridor, Steel Helmet, uh, House of Bamboo, uh, tons of amazing auteur movies. He was able to do it or, or working with the studios. Uh, I can't, but he uh, he loved Trauma's War. And he told me, uh, stay independent, try to keep control of everything and uh, uh, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Very bad advice, but uh, anyway. <laughs> well, something's worked, you know. Uh, for us, when the opportunity came along to partner with you guys and host Tromathon and Troma Dance, it was a dream come true. I mean, literally, the crew was jumping out of their skin. It was right during the pandemic, 2020, and a lot of people were looking for a new home for their established events. And you guys at that point had been doing Troma Dance for 20 years. Right. So can we talk a little bit about how that came to be and how it's kind of grown and changed over the years? Uh, thank you. Yeah, sure. Uh, Trey Parker, whose uh, movie Cannibal the Musical, uh, we oh, helped yeah. out and uh, helped, helped them finish it. They're great guys. He and Matt, uh, Matt Stone, they were obsessed with going to, to, to Sundance. Yeah. And uh, they sent uh, Cannibal the Musical and they paid the uh, submission fee because I, I, I'm not, not going to give any money to Sundance. Uh, they paid for it. And uh, we got a condo out in Sundance. Oh, sorry, a Trey, they, they never got a fuck you letter. Uh, you never got a uh, get lost letter. Uh, so uh, Trey and Matt said, well, they didn't They didn't tell us not to come, so uh, let's come. They didn't even, you know, they sent nothing. Yeah. So uh, we all showed up and Trey created a one movie film festival. Uh, he got he got a room somewhere, on, uh, uh, you know, at some sort of a conference room, uh, you know, equally very well located. And <laughs> People loved the film and that were kind of, and also he, we all were treated so poorly and so uh, snottily by the, not, not the, uh, we never met anyone high up in uh, Sundance, but the, just the staff, just the, the so-called interns, uh, just the thugs from HBO that would uh, run around uh, throw, pulling down our, uh, you know, there's one billboard for independence and the thugs uh, that would pull down our little posters to put up these giant posters for Sundance and HBO and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, just, it, it gets worse and worse, you know. We're in an age of uh, non-disclosure agreements, but the, nobody trusts anybody, right? <laughs> if somebody says, right. The script, I won't, I'm not going to sign it. Uh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. I've been doing it 50 years. If you don't trust me, don't send me your fucking script. <laughs> Although I have to say, I did, I did sign uh, non-disclosure for uh, Toxic Avenger, a billion dollar uh, Remake with uh, Peter Dinklage. Uh, oh, yes. Uh, oh. That we're going to hopefully, uh, you know. <laughs> hopefully talk about uh, talk next about a year, booth. Next year at Trauma Dance, we play. Oh, my gosh. That'd, that'd be, be great. great. Yeah, we'll get Peter to come out. I should give you the, the name of, of my boss at Legendary, uh, who's a great guy. Uh, he's very young, uh, loves Trauma, as does the director. Yeah, who knows? Maybe uh, that would be a lead film next year. I'm telling you, we would love it. I mean, the excitement is there. As soon as the news broke, we were getting tagged uh, left and right from people uh, excited about this coming to a, a big screen to the, uh, near them. So yeah, people are always asking me when I'm when I'm dressed up in the costume. They're like, "Is it true? Is there a remake coming?" 
Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm still waiting for the trailer, though. You know, it's a very different Toxie. Yeah, it's very different. Uh, after all, Peter Dinklage is playing Toxie. I can tell you that because it's public knowledge. Elijah Wood is very good. Uh, Kevin Bacon is hilarious. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't even be commenting. Uh, sorry. Yeah, spoiler alert. <laughs> Yeah, now, now we're not going to get paid. We broke it down. <laughs> Thanks to good old Virgil. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said it, you know, when I when, know. when the industry kind of pushes back against you and you, you don't feel welcome in the industry, you guys, again, the perfect example. Screw it. We're going to create our own thing. We're going right. to uh, march to our own tune. And again, with the crossover of what we try to do here, it's in a lot of ways, it's selfish programming. It's things that we would love to see on the big screen and uh, have the opportunity to play on the big screen. And us being such Troma fans, the idea of coming together again for Tromathon was a dream come true. And we're coming off of two amazing years back to back. You weren't able to come the first year because of the pandemic, but you and the commission were here last year. And boy, oh boy. Uh, we could tell you guys fell in love with what we were doing and what we stand for with the preservation of 35 millimeter. I'll never forget, as long as I live, how beautiful watching hashtags. Well, it wasn't 35 millimeter, it was the DCP. That's but right. It was so beautiful on your beautiful screen with the amazing projection and the best sound I've ever heard for hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. And uh, to see it in the twilight with a few kind of dark blue behind it oh, yeah. with the twinkling stars. Oh my God, it was yeah. great. Great, <laughs> unbelievable. And of course, uh, working with Lisa and JT was a blast. <laughs> you know, what a crazy connection. And we say everything we have here is is destined. You know, the connections that we make, all that other stuff. But the fact that JT has kind of gone on to become your guys on the road Toxie and Lisa has joined the Toxie pack is is again, another amazing destined gift here. Well, it's good co-promotion because everywhere JT and Lisa go, uh, they and we uh, promote Mahoney, uh, you know, Troma and all that stuff. So uh, it's a good symbiotic relationship, I think. Yeah. I love to do it because, like, you're just such a uh, such a good guy. I've come to learn, you know, not that I didn't think anything bad before. I'm just saying, but, like, personally, I've, I've just witnessed hanging out with you, like, I tell everybody this story because I can't help it about wh how great you are. After we had dinner at the Chinese restaurant, I tell everybody this. You insisted that we all walk double dementia back to her car, even though it was blocks away, which was so nice. Then along the way, you stopped and, and to observe and like empathize with like a, the homeless situation because they were dropping off a bus of people to like a homeless shelter. And you actually like you stopped and like took it in. And I, rec I realized that. And then when we, we passed a uh, street vendor and they're trying to hawk some, some merchandise, some shill some merchandise. And you said like, oh, oh I'll, I'll be back later. I'll be back later. And I'm thinking like, oh, he just said that, you know, to get rid of the guy. Like I would do the same thing. But then on the way back, you had to stop and you did give him money and you bought a hat from the guy. And I was like, oh, my God, like this guy's so great. And then you offered us the hat and you were like, oh, I'm sorry. You like this hat? <laughs> And so I was like, happened. this guy is so genuinely cool and like empathetic. He's, he's real. He lives in like the real world. And I, I just appreciate that. So we, we love like helping you out. Well, thank you very much. And I hope uh, from the recesses of what's left of my heart that uh, you will be, you all will be successful uh, J July 15th through 17th. And uh, uh, we are working hard in Tromaville to promote and uh, try to make your artwork, uh, JT and Lisa and, uh, the videos you've done as uh, well known as possible. And thank you for all you did. The amazing uh, Ukraine video, uh, <laughs> the and the, that uh, painting. Yeah, James got an IMDb credit off of that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody put it up on IMDb. I'll take it. But but uh, I'm no. Uh, that was Andrew Kern did the art for that poster, which was cool. I just that's another thing that I do appreciate about you is that like you do make your voice heard. Like you do. You don't just. You're not afraid of saying something that's going to upset somebody. And if you, there's a situation like now the the Roe versus Wade situation or like with Ukraine, like you you put your thoughts out there. So like I'm I'm always like down to help, you know, amplify what you have to say. Here's something I was interested. Uh, uh, you know, Virgil, I know you watch a lot of porn. Um, oh, yeah. 
<laughs> you know, these porn people are billionaires, right? Uh, I don't watch any, but I know damn well that Vivid and TubeGalore.com and uh, uh, PornTube, they've made a lot of money off of uh, 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 women's bodies. Uh, I have seen nothing from the porn industry protesting this Supreme Court decision. What's that all about? Yeah, it's pretty wow. Wild. Isn't yeah. that terrible? That's terrible. That's that's as bad as the uh, you know the majors. Uh, you know, Oscars so white and uh, all that kind of stuff. They ought yeah. to be out there in front leading the charge. Jesus. That's the sad thing about it is you have so many people who you know are afraid to speak up and they bite their tongue in this this yeah. uh, I'll offend anybody world. You know. And again, you know, another uh, crown in your jewel is that you've never been that. You're always one of those guys that wears your personal feelings on your sleeve and you're not afraid to mix that with your business. Oliver Wendell Holmes, whose, whose biography I read, a Yankee in Olympus. He was one of the great Supreme Court justices, but uh, not a good one. But he did say uh, to truly live, a man must share in the actions and passions of his time. Now, you can't say man now, but you could say a soul or a person or or, or they uh, must, uh, you know what I mean? But I believe that very, you know, I read that book in like sixth grade. Yeah. I don't think I, at the time they asked me to write an essay on it. I I, I didn't get it. But uh, um, after I got a C on the essay, I, a teacher explained what, he, what the meaning was. <laughs> and it stuck with you. <laughs> 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 well, the big uh, the big headliner last year was uh, hashtag Shakespeare's st- uh, shitstorm, which I know you guys have been on the road like rock stars this year touring the film. Yep. You want to let people know where that film is as far as availability? Is it still out for? Uh, are you still on yeah. tour? It's uh, the next stop is uh, Arlington, Texas. Uh, the um, Studio Movie Grill. That's uh, oh, a yeah. complex. Yeah. And, uh, they're they're going to establish. Trauma Mondays in Arlington, Texas, and they're kicking off with hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm. Amazing. We don't actually, uh, we got something going in San Francisco. They're playing Divide and Conquer. I'll be there, but I don't think uh, hashtag Shakespeare Shitstorm's in the deal. Yeah. Uh, so, right, uh, I think we're searching for theaters. I, I don't have the schedule, but there may be one or two dates we have that I don't know about. But yeah. New York went a couple of weeks. LA went a couple of weeks at Lemley. Uh, very nice. And uh, the Times gave the film a pretty, New York Times gave a pretty good review. That's great. Uh, not as great as the review they gave you uh, two years ago. <laughs> what a weird, talk about divine. Literally the week before we yeah. almost bought out, we get an amazing shine piece in the New York Times. And we're being reached out by everybody, you know, to congratulate us. And then the news breaks that we're about to be bought out. And it, yes. I think it it only helped, you know, our whole situation go viral. The fact that it was on so many yeah. songs. It was kismet, without a doubt. And uh, we all contributed and we all uh, sent out uh, huge numbers of, uh, you know, we're doing what we're doing now for uh, abortion. Yeah, you guys are amazing. You always are. Well, you uh, guys are amazing to keep at it. And, uh, uh, you know, your machines are made in the... 40, 1945 or something? Yeah, 1947, been run since 49. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, how great that is. Are you moving up in 100 years. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a functioning museum. Jeff says it perfectly. It we are, every it's single good. night we have people come in who are just wowed by the fact that we're able to run a business on such kind of archaic equipment. But in their heads, they're thinking, this is how I grew up watching movies. You know, yes. this is this is something worth preserving. So it's a really great situation, you know. And, and the tents, the people pitching tents, it's like a mini Woodstock. I thought that was you know, crazy. that's the crossover. I'm, I grew up on a stage and was fronting some bands at the time when I came into the fold here. And I, the first thing I thought was, man, if we can do, you know, like an, an overnight situation that could make this like a rock concert, you know, like a music festival. And it, it grew word overnight, no pun intended, as far as people having that option now to be able to come and spend a whole weekend. So, Wonderful. yeah. Terrific. Well, good uh, luck with that. Let me finish on the trauma dance. Sorry. I, uh, yeah, I, sure. No. I digress too much. So out of that um, uh, unpleasant uh, first experience at Sundance, we decided let's uh, poke a stick in the eye of Robert Redford and uh, we'll start trauma dance. In fact, Trey Parker suggested we use that name for the festival. Yeah, they didn't dare come after us for some reason, <laughs> which is amazing. Because they did come after uh, the commissioner. Uh, they, she had uh, she was commissioner of New York Films. And she they had a, a big uh, exhibit on Main Street in Sundance. 
and she sent out the press releases called Schmooze Dance. Come to Schmooze Dance in the Choma. We have forums, we have uh, panels, we have, uh, uh, you know, making movies in New York, Schmooze Dance. She got a lawyer's letter from uh, uh, Choma wow. Dance. Wow. And yet we didn't get one for Choma Dance. Yeah. <laughs> from from uh, uh, Sundance, but we didn't get one for Choma Dance. Wow, how about it? Well, you brought her up, so we got to say, uh, I see the birthday balloons behind you. I know the commish just celebrated her birthday, so happy belated birthday to the commish. Well, thank you. Thank you very, very much. Yeah, not to get too personal, but how long have you guys been together? I mean, I look at that relationship as such an amazing inspiration. You know, my whole thing here at the drive-in is trying to run it with friends and family, and you seem to have done that amazingly. Believe it or not, uh, we have a very lovely three girls who are great. My wife and I have been married almost 50 years, uh, like Troma, 49, 50 years. And uh, boy, have I been lucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, they say it behind every great man, right? <laughs> Just made it through without getting punched out or <laughs> come very close. But uh, people watch the honeymoon, well, Vir Virgil. You watch, oh, yeah, to the moon. Jackie Gleason says, I got a big mouth. <laughs> it says it quite a number of uh, episodes. And unfortunately, yeah. I didn't, but I've been lucky. And Love your wife, Blue Apron cook. trophy wife uh, videos of her cooking. <laughs> oh, that's so nice of you. I'll tell the commission. <laughs> I will tell her that. Well, you guys are such supporters of what we do with 35 millimeter. You guys have many of your films on 35 millimeter. Um, at what point did you guys make that shift? I take it that now the screenings of those 35 millimeters are pretty rare. Well, the problem is the labs that we use uh, pretty much went bankrupt and uh, they, would, they didn't tell us. Or if they did tell us, they didn't give us all our materials back. And I believe that, uh, you know, we used to make 135 millimeter prints of everything. Uh -huh. And um, uh, I think Michael Hers and his uh, stupidity uh, had most of them uh, destroyed because the storage uh, was ridiculous oh, yeah. and yeah. DVD hadn't come out yet. And, uh, uh, you know, we blew it in that department. Uh, we also threw away a lot of great uh, bonus material. Choma's War, there's a wonderful scene where the, a blind uh, person uh, with a beautiful breast uh, falls into the uh, water like uh, Humphrey Bogart in... Uh, African queen and emerges with, with leeches all over her boobies. It was terrific, uh, but uh, it was too long. The you know, film was too long, but it would have been a wonderful uh, uh, film nerd kind of a bonus. Yeah, well, it went the same way that vinyl records did. People thought at a certain point, well, this isn't worth anything. It's just taking up space. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, don't feel bad. But most of the situations that we run into where a print isn't available, that's usually the case. Somebody just kind of discarded it thinking, when would I ever need this again? You know? Well, the good news about trauma is that a lot of, of our prints were sold out the back door. So very often you can, well, there's a company called Agfa that yeah. has rights to our movies. They have some 35. I don't know what ones they have, but there are um, a lot of collectors who have, I see it, uh, who actually have uh, our prints. So you may be able to, you know, maybe if we start six months in advance, if you have a print for a, a trauma movie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. You, uh, what is it? Uh, pardon. We'll give you a presidential pardon. <laughs> <laughs> Which means a free the, pass. Uh, <laughs> to the driving, right? To Mahoney driving. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of the stuff we do get come from private collectors, and we've been very, yeah. very okay. blessed in that front. But That's terrific. The other problem we have, Virgil, uh, JT, and Lisa, and Mark, of course, uh, is that uh, in the uh, theaters, of, uh, like, uh, I don't want to name names, but uh, uh, very often the, the projectionists are kids, you know, uh, uh, film school graduates or, you know, they're not union guys anymore and they uh, collect. So, yes. you know, we'll, we'll send out the, the Toxic Avenger and uh, we don't have any editing room for 35 anymore. So we can't, we can't check the print. Yeah. So uh, we'll send it on to the next place and they send us a nasty note. Hey, the head crushing scenes there. We don't want this version. We want the real version. <laughs> So, uh, with that problem, collectors, uh, not you guys, but uh, uh, often that happens and they don't tell us. If they would tell us, we could make a piece of it and stick it in, but they don't tell us. I mean, just like theaters, you know, we were, how we were born really was when the industry shifted to digital and said, hey, we're not going to be producing films on 35 millimeter anymore. And if you don't have a means to show digital, you're pretty much out of business. And for a lot of people in the uh, industry, it was a total shift to try to figure out 
how to get your product out there in a digital sense. And well, also, a lot of the independent theater, uh, a lot of the independent theaters that uh, Troma plays are small and run uh, by individuals, you know, families and individuals, and yep. and uh, they couldn't afford the uh, conversion. Sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah, I, we donated to a couple of them, uh, you know, two fifty or five hundred bucks or something. Uh, sure. But it, it, it's nothing. I mean, it must be cost a fortune. Yeah, you know. Yeah, that's the downside. I think we have lost a number of our uh, independent trauma theaters. <laughs> oh yeah, and drive-ins. Oh. You know, it was the de- the second kind of or wave of the death of a lot of drive-ins who said, "Hey, you know, I just don't have the means. This is my uh, my yeah, outs." That's right. So, but. The legend was born with the Mahoning and the crossover. And what I was saying about the digital is that you guys now have Troma Now, which is a means to get all of your product out there in the digital age for people to enjoy in their homes, on their phones, however they get their media. How was that born? Uh, well, one of my daughters, Elizabeth, who uh, was a founder of um, Kit Split, which is a peer-to-peer uh, equipment uh, uh, like a Airbnb for film equipment and video. Equipment. Yes. Oh my God. Kids, yeah. But anyway, she uh, was interning uh, after college for a company called VHX, who were uh, helping people video stream. They were a platform for video streaming. So she yeah. was interning there. She said, "You should do this because she could see that people were doing all right with it, or starting to do all right with it." And it, that with yeah. uh, at VHX at the time, it wouldn't cost anything. Other than uh, you know maybe a couple of thousand bucks, really. so we did it, and um, you were only available to go to the website to pick it up. Uh, oh no! Originally, it was on this VHX. Uh, they put it up on Roku, Amazon, blah blah blah. You know. Right, streaming well, devices. That helped yeah. us, but then they got acquired by Vimeo. Yeah, evil Vimeo. Uh, suddenly, it, we have to have twenty-five thousand dollars to get onto uh, Roku and uh, Amazon. Uh, or whatever right. those things are. Again, I'm not heavily into the business side, but uh, so if, uh, we managed to scrape together um, twenty-five thousand dollars about five years ago. And every two years, we have to pay Vimeo twenty-five thousand dollars for the to oh. make sure the app is free. Right. Uh, every two years, <laughs> but it's been it's been well worth it. <laughs> yeah, well, it's great. You know, like like in a weird way, being ahead of the curve. Everybody has a streaming app now and, you know, a means to have a trauma fan get as much trauma overload in one spot is a great tool and a great thing for the future. Well, that's great to hear and thank you. And certainly right now, uh, trauma dance is growing slowly, but enough to really uh, kind of keep us alive, uh, which is, you know, we uh, uh, Blu-rays of, for collectors, you know, the theatrical is a loss leader for the most part. So here we are with, uh, with uh, we don't want to deal with the uh, big guys because they, they totally stomp on us. So uh, you know, we've got our own little streaming service. And, you know, we do everything ourselves. That's the way to it's play. Safe. Punk rock mentality, <laughs> baby. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're hitting like the mainstream again, though, recently, because I've been seeing the masks from Trick or Treat Studios. The figures are in Walmart. Like, it's bizarre. It, and I'm cool, but I could go to a Walmart like today and go find a Toxie figure. Yeah, Mago, Mago, you know? yeah. Mago, Super Seven, uh, creepy, Big Herc, Big Herc's um, uh, fashions, the fashion department, terrific. It's nuts, you know. How lucky are we? But I think the Toxie, uh, big budget, has a lot to do with it, and just 50 years of, as Woody Allen says, success is 88 percent just showing up. <laughs> 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 I couldn't even find the first wave of the uh, the Walmart talk. Oh, they were, they were all oh, sold out. I mean, had to get yeah. one for me at, in her town. So, yeah. Yeah. It's great. It's too really, How nice. I think Migo did a good job. They all did. They, like, they're all very nice. They, they get our uh, team's opinions and notes. Uh, and usually the younger guys at Troma know, you know, know what to tell them. And uh, uh, they're terrific. How lucky are we? It's, uh, again, it's publicity. Yeah. It's all getting out there. Brand recognition, you know. And 50 years of bootlegging, which doesn't hurt. <laughs> it all helps. Piracy, the fake T-shirts, the fake posters, you know, all this stuff. I don't really mind it because it's free billboard. Yeah, absolutely. Know? Let the fandom flag fly, you know. Exactly. That's right. Well, yep. we don't want to keep you all day, but I got to ask about your experiences as a youngster and coming up with drive-ins. Did you, were you blessed? I take it being a New Yorker, were you blessed with drive-ins right around you as a kid? 
There were some, but in the in the old days, there were 18 sub distributors. The country was divided, at least for us, into 18 territories, yeah. each with a sub distributor. They were responsible for uh, getting the theaters and for putting up the advertising money, and then they would steal all the rest of the revenue. So most of the uh, independent filmmakers went out of business. But uh, somehow we were able to get through that period, <laughs> and we did very well actually. And um, so I didn't have any uh, real uh, experience with the drive-ins. Uh, I had only been to them as a child when my father would put me in the trunk and close it uh, <laughs> and tell me he was taking me to the drive-in, and then I'd wake up in a in a garbage dump somewhere. <laughs> you know, very little experience with the drive-in. Yeah. And, but they sure were a very important staple of our. Uh, of our own staple. Yeah. Well, that's the staple thing. Of it's, staple. It is a piece of American culture that's certainly worth oh, uh, preserving, you know. You said it. You said it. Along with those wonderful 1950s California apartment complexes with the uh, port. Oh, the cars, yeah. Uh, yeah. They're knocking, they're knocking them down, but there's, a, you know, some of them they're trying to save. And, you know, all this stuff is, uh, is wonderful, yeah. right? It, the culture of the car, my God. That's the thing, you know. It's it's uh, it's the landscape of our our country. So, yes, uh, exactly. Well, James, Lisa, Mark, you got any questions for King Lloyd before we let him go? I can be your queen. Too, <laughs> <laughs> sure. I do have an interesting story. At Zombie Fest this year, they had Brian Houston out there. And I was standing outside. It was just about dark, so they had the coming up shows up on the screen and Brian used to seeing you pop up there and he's like, Oh my gosh, Lloyd, I love him. He's so nice. And he was like going to tell a story about, and I missed part of it, but it was something about you getting an award. He was there and seeing, you know, you guys were getting an award and you didn't want to take the award. You were like, no, we give the awards here. <laughs> But he was like, oh. Lloyd, he's so nice. He's so nice. No, that's kind of rude. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad it came out okay. <laughs> yeah, Yusna was a dream. We had him out. Oh, he, he's the best. Oh. He's so talented. The best guy. He and Stuart Gordon, the best. Yeah. Unfortunately, it Stuart blew my Gordon, mind but... that he never did uh, appearances. When he was here, he was so shocked at how many people wanted to meet him and get his autograph. I said, man, you could be doing this every weekend. <laughs> Nice again, nicest guy. His wife is lovely. In fact, his kids were with us in Spain uh, at a festival. Uh, Citrus. He had a movie, and we had one. And uh, you know, we really all hit it off. I had a couple trauma guys with me, and my wife, and he and his wife and kids, and we all had a great time. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, he loved you. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Don't tell him that we let our uh, we let his prepubescent kid uh, smoke pot. <laughs> well, they, yeah, he may not have been. He may have been teenager. <laughs> Went in Spain. <laughs> Lisa, didn't you have another story that you were telling me about Michael Hurst? Oh, yeah. So um, you guys were up at in New York for the Shakespeare's premiere in New York. JT was with you. And I was in Atlantic City because we were going to be working the trauma table with the boys. And um, I'm at this show. My friend's band's playing. And I meet this guy in between sets. And he's like, yeah, my friend, he makes movies. And we were just talking. I'm like, who's your friend? And he said, we golf together. He's like, uh, Michael Hurd. And I was like, wow. <laughs> That's <laughs> like, so amazing. What a connection. It was weird that I was there for you guys. And then I meet him and he knows, you know, I was like, wow. That's, That's weird. amazing. <laughs> That's very unusual. Yeah, Michael is very private. But you can see he does exist. He does yeah. exist. Proof. Yes. yes, that's what I'm saying. I was like, I don't know if he even is a real person. <laughs> and then I meet a person who actually knows him. So I'm like, wow. There you go. It's <laughs> yes. uh, like I, uh, the, um, what's it called? Uh, there's this uh, 50 foot giant legendary serpent that lives in the Amazon. Uh, and it's about a, a yard circumference of its belly. And people have seen it. There's uh, too many people who have seen it, uh, uh, kind of like uh, Michael Hurst. <laughs> seen him on a golf course. Yeah. It, has, it has something mama in the name. So apparently it's a, a mama of all uh, pythons or Amazon, uh, not Amazon, the other thing that strangles you. Pythons, uh, yeah. Not python or the anaconda. Yeah. Or whatever. I think it's a, a, a subspecies if they 
can actually find it, a subspecies of uh, anaconda. But uh, it's like Michael. It, it, people have cited it. Did you do a big pose of him just looking at the camera? <laughs> All I have to say is that it was an honor getting COVID with you. <laughs> uh, we all it. That's right. Yeah. Thanks to the uh, Museum of the Moving Image. Or it might have been that little theater, uh, Cinema Village. I, I think it was that bar we went to afterward, honestly. <laughs> no, that's where I caught the clap. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> came from, uh, from the Leaker Street <laughs> Cinema. By the way, they held us over, uh, JT. We got two weeks there. So oh, we great. A little advertising. That was a very magical evening, I have to say. I mean, it, you know, I was dressed like Toxy, but everyone was dressed to the nines, and it was like, kind of felt like what you, like, earned for all these years, all 50 years of trauma. It's like, this was like the pinnacle, it felt like, you know, for, for the movie, that's like your most personal movie. That it's like reflective about you and like your career, and it was like widely celebrated there, and you know it was it was a wonderful little night. Certainly was for for uh, for for this uh, the narcissist. It was the best. <laughs> you got to be a fan of you. That's the key. <laughs> Thanks again. Thank you so much for doing all this. Yeah, and, and it's fun. It's fun. It's art. It's business it, it couldn't be better how lucky are we right it's it's a great yeah. extension of what yeah. we do and our personalities and the fact that people come into the theater and they know who we are we're taking a tip from uncle lloyd we're putting ourselves out there and we're uh, we're representing the thing that we love with all of our heart in a big bad way so lloyd thank you for everything that you've done for the mahoning we can't wait to see you next week and again folks you're hearing it here july 15th 16th and 17th Get your butt to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, Tromathon 22 and Tromadance 22. Tutu, the year of toxicity. Yeah, right. Tutu, uh, yeah. And, and hashtag me, Tutu. Uh, <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, uh, one more thought, which I can't remember now, but uh, oh well, whatever. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> well, you've been fantastic, and uh, we can't wait to see you and the commish. And uh, on that note, Jeff, Take it away, my friend. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks again for coming out tonight to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater. We hope you'll come back and see us again real soon. The exit is on the right-hand side of the screen at the front of the field. And most importantly, have a very safe trip home. Good night and God bless you. <laughs>